I don't know if you remember, but we started Unit 6 with a warning. Y'all are about to say some racism. And wasn't the whole last unit just gross? Historically, Unit 6 is fascinating and interesting and everything, but I hate it. It's the worst. There's all this nastiness and racism and suffering and exploitation. And there's no payoff. There's never like, and this bad guy was stopped from doing all these horrible things. It's just gross. So I had to pick an MVP who would encapsulate all the grossness of Unit 6. Today, we review the MVP of Unit 6, King Leopold II, of Belgium. Ugh. No one epitomizes the greed and nastiness of Unit 6 more than King Leopold II of Belgium. Leopold ruled Belgium for exactly 44 years, from December 17, 1865 to December 17, 1909. At the Berlin Conference in 1884, Leopold, not Belgium, not the Belgian trading company, but Leopold himself took personal control of the Congo by promising to improve the lives of the people there. <sighs> I hate this guy so much. He then proceeded to use the Congo as his own personal rubber plantation. If the Congolese did not meet their rubber quota, or if they were caught harvesting the rubber in a non-sustainable manner, he would have their hands cut off. There's a ton of pictures of this stuff online as this was highly chronicled by a few missionaries in the Congo. You can look at them if you want, but I wanna show you one photo that had the most impact. The man pictured here is Nasala. His wife and daughter were killed and mutilated by Leopold's men. He brought his dead five-year-old daughter's hand and foot to the local mission where he knew a photographer lived. Alice Seeley Harris took this photo in 1904, and then hundreds more. And she wasn't the only one working to end these atrocities. Five years earlier, Joseph Conrad wrote his famous novel, The Heart of Darkness, where he recounts his journey up the Congo River. It was an early account of the horrors of colonialism in the Congo. And some 19th century celebrities even got involved. 19th century authors like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle of Sherlock Holmes fame and Mark Twain worked to put an end to the atrocities. This is great. Twain even wrote a pamphlet in 1905 called King Leopold's Soliloquy. The whole thing is given from Leopold's perspective as he gives a monologue defending his actions. It's not super long and I actually linked it below, but damn if Leopold couldn't have picked a worse person to roast him than Mark Twain. Like if you're in a rap battle in 1905, the worst person who could hold the mic across from you was definitely Mark Twain. My favorite part is at the end, there's a whole section dedicated to how should we kill Leopold II? All in all, between 10 and 20 million Congolese were murdered under King Leopold's regime. Today, there are no statues of Adolf Hitler in Germany, and there should be no statues of this man in Belgium, but they are everywhere. And in the wake of the Black Lives Matter protests of 2020, Belgian protesters took to the street demanding that these monuments to genocide be removed. But even today, the mayor of Antwerp, where a lot of these statues were, said he took them down, not because they were horrible things, but because they were a public safety hazard. So that's my MVP. He's not my favorite. He's not the best person. He's not the coolest person. But he's the most valuable to your understanding of Unit 6 and imperialism. Okay, I'm done talking about this guy. Let's leave the modern period behind and move to the contemporary period, 1900 to present. And let's start by looking at some of the major shifts that were happening at the beginning of the 20th century. I'll see you tomorrow.